It's a rough job. Somebody's got to do it, but we um, play with dogs for a living. So we run around to shelters and we help them make sure that they get every dog out of the kennel at some point every day. And we help them do that by introducing play groups. I think that play groups have become the foundation for everything that we do because every dog every day is really important to me. When dogs are kept in a kennel isolated by themselves, it just is behaviorally deteriorating. It's really important to me that every dog gets a chance out of their enclosure every day. And play groups are a great way to help you get there. When we say our motto, every dog, every day, what we mean is that every dog should have an opportunity to get outside, to play, to express themselves, to be a normal dog. A successful play group is dogs having a good time, whatever that means to them. So some could be playing rough and rowdy, some could be over here playing tag, the push and pull thing, some could be over there sunbathing. So it's really whatever is working for them, whatever makes them happy, that makes me happy. A play group is not a free-for-all, like a dog park. A play group is not putting a bunch of dogs in together without thought and care regarding the experience that they're having, that they're going to have, that you want them to have. It is a structured and safe enrichment program. We can actually now say that playgroups are contributing to safer shelter environments because when we're measuring dog to human bites on site with the shelters that we've worked with, there is an average decrease of just under 30%. When I showed up at the shelter where I was working, we were able to rotate 65 to 80 dogs in two and a half hours by ourselves. If I tried to hand walk those dogs to attend to them, it would take me six and a half hours to rotate them one time. Instead, the two of us could rotate that whole population twice a day. If you think about being in a noisy environment with all the barking, barking for dogs is an alert system. And so that's like us living in a house with a fire alarm going off all the time. So that could really weigh on them getting them out of the kennels and letting them have healthy contact with one another, recognizing that they're actually not a threat to one another, really helps to reduce their stress and helps them cope and thrive in that environment. If you're going to describe how a dog is social with other dogs, you need to see how they are with other dogs. We can't judge them based upon their behavior on leash. We can't judge them behind a fence. We have to see how do they actually engage in other dogs. Play groups can really be helpful for the dogs that are difficult to market sometimes. You know, the short-coated or the blocky-headed dogs or the larger dogs or the black dogs, the ones that sometimes are harder to get out the door. If they're great in play groups and their best friend is a little dog, you know, it's great for people to see that. So it helps them find a home. We've learned from shelters that they feel that one of the benefits of playgroups is staff morale. And when I first started doing this, that was not what I was anticipating or shooting for, but playgroups are actually helping the human caretakers to cope and thrive because they're having a good time watching the dogs enjoy themselves and it's making their job easier, more efficient. So we've learned that it's as good for the people as it is for the dogs. Playgroups are a game changer, they change lives. It's easier for people to take care of the dogs if they're happier and healthier. We're making better adoption matches. We're having less returns. I mean, it's just, it's a win-win for everybody. To learn more about playgroups, watch the Playstyles 101 video presented by Petfinder and visit dogsplayingforlife.com.